Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? I am bouncing up across the field with this sea drill. We've just, well, this field here is just about finished. Um, it is very, very bouncy with this particular sea drill. And I'm guessing it is mostly to do with the ground response mod. Um, which is a bit of a shame because this drill is actually really good. This is um, absolute classic design for a sea drill. Now, I don't know about in the US. Um... But certainly over here in Europe, a seed drill that looks like this would have been featured on just about every farm in Europe. Um, it, it's, a, it's very familiar. It's, it's a very familiar shape. and um, I mean, it is a little bit wider, actually, than um, most seed drills that I've sort of seen uh, being used in different parts of the country. Um, but it's, it's a very familiar design. Before I go any further, my question for this week is, I am planting canola around the pigs, I am planting barley here around the cows, I've got two fields over by the sheep and another field down here, what do you want me to plant on those? Do you want it to be corn or do you want it to be beans? If I go Alt S a minute, corn and beans both require the temperature of the soil to be at 10 degrees it's the highest temperature required for a crop so that's the one that we're going to go for to sort of push the extreme on it a little bit um it's likely that we won't be able to plant until the early summer so we will just have to wait and see um but yeah which one would you like would you like beans or would you like corn um if we do do corn it'll most likely be that we have to save all the corn that we get for our pigs uh, that we buy next year. If we do beans, we'll sell them and we could end up using some of the money to maybe buy a bit of extra feed for the pigs. Uh, maybe we'll wait until next autumn before we buy the pigs. I'm not sure yet. I'm not quite sure how it's going to work out. I've been doing a little bit of research about prices and stuff like that um, and when's the best time to buy various different animals and so on. And apparently pigs, the best time to buy them is in the very... Uh, at the end of winter um in in like the very early spring um but before the time of year that we actually start the game on for some reason the sea drill is not actually planting properly here it's it's leaving strips and gaps and stuff all over the place which is actually going to be quite detrimental if we, if we end up leaving too much behind it's going to become a problem um let's just go back over this again and see what it's like but anyway, yes, it's your vote, it's your game. Head in the comment section down below, let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right-hand corner. The, um, with the pigs and when you buy them, um, I think it also counts for some of the other animals as well. You, um, sort of the best times a year to purchase them. Um, so what we might do is we might, if we, if... I mean, we may be able to buy some pigs in the autumn. Um, not the autumn, in at the end of winter. Uh, if we can't do that, we will save our money a little bit and um, not buy them sort of in the summer next year. We will start planting crops uh, in preparation for the pigs in the summer, but then we'll, we'll actually go and get the pigs uh, the following winter, I think. That's, that's kind of how I would picture it sort of happening, um, and we, we'll see how that works out. But um, yeah, right now, let's reload this one so that we can put it going in the next field. Then we're going to go back up to the Coon um, Sea Drill that we've got on the Deutz. And with that one, it was pull it, it was sort of pulling and doing all uh, loads of odd, pe uh, peculiar things with the um, Sea Drill. It was like really heavy. We had a bit of a problem with the... Um, uh, what was it? It was a Pottinger, wasn't it? We had a problem with that one. It wouldn't work. I've got no idea why that one didn't work at all. It might have just been that it um, needs uncultivated land in order to work, but I, I'm not sure. But anyway, um, so that one we returned, and now we've got this Coon one. But the Coon one seems to be extremely heavy and is pulling the tractor around a little bit. I noticed yesterday, just sort of when we were finishing up, um, which is fine and all, but uh, we're going to need some... We, we may need to sort of nurse it along a bit as we go along. Now, the other thing that I noticed about this seed drill is that in, when it's completely full, it actually goes right up over the top. So it does give you, like, the option to, like, load it from both ends so that you don't overload too much seed into it. Um, and you know that you've put too much seed into it because it sort of shows up through the top of the seed drill, through through the, uh, the lid after it's shut down. Let's just move this one back in here. Switch him off. Out we go. And 
shut that one down. How much seed have we got sticking through the top now? We've still, still got quite a bit, so never mind. Um, yes. For those of you who haven't yet, make sure you go and watch my video about the new maps that we're going to be um, starting on this week, or the, the new map. There's five maps that I've gone through and I've taken a look at. Uh, you need to pick the one that appeals to you the most and make sure you vote on it because that is going to be the other series. Um, I'm going back to doing Farming Simulator seven days a week. Um, I can admit when I was wrong and I think that stopping Farming Simulator every day on this channel was a mistake. Um, I've People are enjoying the other videos that I've been doing, I've just not had anywhere near as much interest in those as I have in Farming Simulator and the general feeling from the comments that I've been reading across the channel now are that um, you're feeling a little bit let down by me and you people are disappointed that I've made this decision so I am putting this right as of this week and I will go back to doing farming simulator I this is going to be realistic as realistic as we can um, although this bouncing seed drill is not overly realistic it, it, it is at least sort of going um, so we, we can be grateful for that but this is going to be the realistic series and then the other one is we are going to be starting it with 100 million dollars or euros depending where it is that we are we've got choices of maps we've got two of them in the eu one in the us one in canada and one in australia so go and check out that video you will see a quick five minute tour of each map um and then pick the one that appeals to you most um appeals to you the most and we can sort of get started from there that will start on thursday that will be my first episode will be on thursday so we'll do it then um let me just go through here this is the deutz far agro star with um the which is it oh the new hole is now finished um it's what i'm uh, sorry i'm trying to find what the, this one is it's the combi liner Cetera 3000 the coon one um, but the other one that we had going just now, this one, has now decided he's finished when he wasn't finished at all. I didn't think he was. Let me just back it up and try and start this one again. Hopefully it'll run. Back up here. I don't know, he, he turned the wrong way for some strange reason. If I can get it lined up just right, hopefully he will carry on and seed this field. So we've only got this... Uh, have we got that one over there? Oh yeah, we do have. We've got Field 78 that we need to plant as well, right next to us. Right, there's that one done. And let's flick back through them. Here we go. Now, this one here, the thing that I've noticed with this is it, it's pulling. It's, it's sort of dragging the machine around quite a bit as you operate. Um, I don't own this field. That's the other issue that we've got here on the end, is that the field boundaries aren't precisely aligned. But you look at that. See the way that it is dragging my tractor around? I mean, I quite like it because it's, it's really making the, the Deutz struggle as it plants. What I'm going to do is if I move back over this side, sort of go in the middle and I'll run a line up through here, hopefully it will put an actual line all the way across so that when it gets to the end of the field and it's going to change round, it's not going to... If the tractor, when the hired help is running... <laughs> Look at it sliding over. If the tractor, when the hired help is running, it goes into another field, it just stops. It doesn't pick up and drive back out of the field. It just says, oh, I don't know what I'm doing here, and just gives up. And um, we don't really want it to be doing that. So let me put this going here. And now I'm hoping that if I drop it there, is the hired help going to actually work? Right, the hired help is going to do it. It should turn round and do the next pass and then we should be able to get some good footage of this sea drill dragging the tractor out if you look in oh no that's not the one that i want if you look in here and we go into sewing machines um I, i'm always thinking of actual sewing you know stitching and so on every time i say that sewing machines uh, requires 120 horsepower our tractor that we have at the moment is more than 120 horsepower uh which one is it? that one there yes it is that one that one is 143 horsepower so in theory it should have no problem handling this sea drill and yet i mean we've got a fair weight on the front but it's still sort of tilting it back quite a long way there is, there is a lot of weight involved with that one this is another one that has a cultivator on the front so i don't know if it actually is classed as a direct drill or not um something was sort of Actually, we can have a look at that as well, can't we? Wrong one. I keep pressing the wrong one on here. 
and we go into here this whiz up down so it's this one here right this isn't a direct drill this is just a standard drill that one there is a direct drill and that one didn't work for us not quite sure why really no idea on that one but there we go see it's it's trying to slide around around sideways i like that the hired help will correct that as it goes along it does that's fantastic look at the wheels spinning on this thing it is absolutely brilliant the, the struggle the struggle is real on this one the struggle is absolutely brilliant so yeah we are going to get our canola planted it's going to be a it's going to be a bit of a bit of work here really um for this poor tractor but it is going to do it look at that look the wheels are spinning it is going this is awesome we'll go over and we'll have a look at the other two tractors a minute make sure they're coming along all right and we can get probably get one or two of them up here so that they can finish doing canola and we'll get that done um hopefully it'll be this episode that will all be finished and then we can worry about next time well actually we've got to wait quite a while for the ground to warm up enough to be able to plant beans or corn so we won't be doing that until next week so i might in our next episode i mean it we'll probably still have a little bit of uh, planting still to do but uh we may end up oh no we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to go over the fertilizer again aren't we we will need to do more fertilizer and then we can sort of possibly see about taking down a tree or two I think maybe we'll break out a chainsaw. I don't know yet. I'm quite excited. The Zeta is actually coming along quite nicely. It's still bouncing around like crazy. Um, this has been mentioned in uh, a thread. I think it is on Giants Forum. Um, I'm pretty sure it's on the Giants Forum. But anyway, I have seen this mentioned. And it is on the list of um, things to do for the next update for the Massey Ferguson pack from Black Sheep so hopefully that the whole bouncing issue will be dealt with fairly soon we'll probably have finished our planting by that point but the time we get to our next lot of planting i'm hoping that the it, it'll sort of have been corrected so that one can carry on there this one here uh, we've still got plenty of seed we've got big patches left all over the place and it's the problem it with the um uh telegraph poles and everything that are left in the middle and they do create a bit of an issue um, one thing that I have realised is that we've got this grass field right in front of us and we've got a grass field over by the sheep but there is a very real possibility that we are not going to have enough grass to be able to cut. Now there are a few patches on this map that we may be able to get away with cutting um, that we don't own. Um, well we, we, see, we could sort of treat it like um, a contract cut or something like that but anyway. Um, there's a couple of patches that we could po potentially do like that but the the issue is we just don't have very much grass so we could very well end up um, doing one of these fields as chaff for silage um, I mean I'd like to do some grass for chaff as well as uh, hay for it as well that field does look like it's got oh no it's they look like it's got another growth stage come onto it but it hasn't yet um, you can get two and a half cuts of grass. I said this yesterday. Um, you can get roughly two and a half cuts uh, through the year. You get one early summer, one end of summer, and then you get half a cut, sort of a couple of growth stages in the autumn. So probably we'll do what we own as hay. We've got 100 cows, and then whatever young stock we get this year, we're not going to buy any more cows. We're um, keeping hold of our money at the moment, but... I'm seriously considering using some of that money to buy a field that is already planted out with grass so that we can um, take some grass as silage and we, we can sort of uh, chaff it up. And the idea would be is that we would do that at the same time as doing chaff with one of the fields of crops. So I'm thinking probably this field here, actually. Um, I think it'd be quite interesting... I know whichever one we do is going gonna, is gonna to be reasonably interesting, but I think it's going to be quite interesting doing this field with chaff because of all of the um, thingies around the edge. And I was hoping to use a trailed forager rather than a, a self-propelled thing. Maybe we could use a trailed one, but I don't know if there's any way to use a trailed one while you're chaffing um, whole crop. I think we may end up having to use a, a self-propelled forager to do that, in which case we'll have to lease one to do it. But I think this field could definitely be the interesting one because of um, all of these telegraph poles all over it. So, yeah, hopefully. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes later in the year and helper e has completed their task that's the zeta down over there 
I'm going to put this tractor seeding the next field over. And then we'll get that Zeta loaded up with seed and we'll drive it out to the where the pig farm is. Although actually, now that I've said that, it might be better if we put the Zeta over on this field. Because it's, such, because it's a smaller tank, this one will last longer. We could drive this one out over to the other farm and load it up with seed. And it's going to last longer. It should be able to do the fields. Whereas the Zeta, because it's a smaller tank, um, ain't going to last as long. Let me just I will just finish this bit a minute. And then I will move some tractors around. And then we can come back and sort of see how things are progressing. Uh, finish that field up there. I'm just going to fill up from that seed pallet. I'm actually going to get another seed pallet from here. I know I've still got a bit of seed back at the yard. But we'll probably end up using that anyway. Um, I need some of it for the... Massive Ferguson seed drill. I also need some of it for uh, next. We've still got three fields to plant after we've done all this. So I think we'll end up using most of the seed that we've already got. So let's just pick that one up. And out of here. I'll start work with this one on the field right next to the one that we're working on with the Deutz. That's it's actually coming along quite nicely. You should be finished soon up there. So let's turn our beacons on. We want to come up this way. Uh, which way do I want to go? I actually want to go in round here. In here. I'll cut across the... I can cut across the bottom of the field. Where is he going? <laughs> okay, so it appears that the Deutz is going to carry on and do the other field instead of this field. So we will just carry on and finish this one. I love the way the hired help works sometimes in this game. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. It's just the, the, the little tiny mistakes that the, the hired help makes is just, it seems human. It does. It seems very human sometimes. You look at it working away there. That's brilliant. I, 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 that's really pleased me. I'm, I'm, it's genuinely pleased me. I, I don't know why. Right. You, um... I'm hoping... Oh, no, you're not going to carry on at all, are you? Right, okay. Let's, uh... What's the best way to do this? i got a feeling now that because of the way that it's angled, we're going to struggle to finish this field. Probably should... Uh, you know what? I'll tell you what. We can do this. We can finish it over here. I'm going to have to do two passes. So if I do a second pass up across here, then I can sort of finish it out and we can um, do it. We've got, two, we've got small fields over there, so those won't take very long at all back up onto this one here I had a few people say to me uh, just the other day I don't actually remember when it was said but several people said that they thought that this map would be really really good for time lapse and I don't know I genuinely don't know Dowland Farm is proving to be an absolutely wonderful choice for the time lapse um, some people have said they're really disappointed that Rattlesnake Valley has had to go um, Unfortunately, you know, we, we we didn't have a choice in that one. Unfortunately, that one has gone. Um, uh, but several people have said that they really enjoyed Rattlesnake Valley, but this new one seems to be already um, preferable. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know what the general feeling is, but the few comments have sort of said that uh, Dowland Farm seems to be working really well. I... We'll see how it progresses. We'll, we'll sort of see how, how things sort of go in the future with that one. But so far, getting very positive response. And that is a much smaller scale than the last one we did. And Goldcrest Valley, I mean, it's a vanilla map. And I think the vanilla maps have got a different feel to ones that are built to look like a specific area. Uh, so it's, it's difficult to compare something like um, Goldcrest Valley with other maps that are supposed to be based in the US. Um, as for this one being a successful time-lapse map, I genuinely don't know. Because the fields are so small, I think it might be a bit much for time-lapse because you've got to remember how fast we speed things up. And the amount of turns in that that you make whilst doing this is significantly higher than the amount of turns and so on that we make whilst we're doing... I mean, like, down and farm, the fields are quite big. And so we're not constantly turning around at the ends of the fields. I mean, not... Obviously, I can plough a load of these fields in together, and um, it would work really well doing that. But it's, I still, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm genuinely not sure whether it would work or not. So, um, it's it's not something I'm actually going to try, though. So it doesn't really matter if it would work or not. I got no intention at the moment of turning this map into time lapse. I've got Dowland Farm, 
Next up will be um, Sandy Bay. Unless something really drastic happens, next up will be Sandy Bay. And I was considering using the Platinum Edition um, new map when it comes out, but I thought, no, actually, I'm not going to do that because that's going to be another vanilla map. Um, I mean, yes, it's the, the updated vanilla version, but it's still going to be a vanilla map, and it's going to be done in that kind of style. So it'll, it'll feel South American, and it does. It, the, the video that we've seen, it looks South American. Um, but it's not going to be perfectly South American. I'm just going to flick over to the uh, Deutz here a minute so we can see how this one's getting on. I love the way that this tractor is struggling. Love it. This is so cool. But yeah, it's it looks South American. It's got a South American kind of feel, flavor to it. But yeah, it's a good job I did actually flick over, I think. Um, if we just come up here, we can run a just a stripe along the top here just to make sure that this fits okay. Um... And, yeah, so whilst it's sort of got that South American flavour to it, I don't think it's going to work very well in time-lapse. I'm definitely going to be looking at the map. It, either the realistic series or the unrealistic series will change over the day it comes out. I will produce a, an episode for the new map, and we will go and have a look at the new stuff that's on offer. In particular, the sugarcane harvesting. And I am very well aware that when I posted up a few comments about it on my Facebook page, I put sugar beet all over everything. Um, no, it's not sugar beet. We've got sugar beet. This is going to be sugar cane. It's different matter altogether. Um, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be fantastic doing sugar cane. Um, unrealistic uh, footage and um, gaming and so on. We could put sugar cane anywhere we wanted to. We could um, put sugar cane on this map and uh, sugar cane in Sandy Bay, that sort of thing. Um, but if we're going to be doing it realistically, we won't be putting sugarcane anywhere other than South America and I think actually you grow sugarcane in Australia, don't you? Correct me if I'm wrong, anybody from Australia, is there anywhere in Australia that you grow sugarcane on a commercial basis? Now I used to live in New Guinea and in the lowlands of New Guinea, they definitely grew sugarcane. I remember seeing the sugarcane harvesters um, working in the fields and the trailers of sugarcane belting up and down the roads when we used to go on holiday occasionally into the lowlands. Um, although we lived right up in the highlands and it was a um, different matter altogether up there. It was, um, it was a very different part of New Guinea compared to down in the lowlands. Um, lowlands was very tropical where we were was classed as subtropical so it's kind of for here in the uk it's like a warm summer's day um you know like 20 20 degrees or so um but whereas down in the lowlands it was like proper hot and yeah well, but we didn't live down there so we didn't need to worry about it but yeah we, so we could grow some sugar cane where we were but it wasn't done on a commercial basis whereas in the lowlands there were commercial sugar cane farms um, and I do remember it um, working. So I'm assuming that there are places in Australia where, where sugarcane is grown commercially and it's something that can happen. So if we're running an Australian base map, we could realistically grow sugarcane there. Um, but I think it does require an, a huge amount of um, irrigation if it's to be done in an arid environment. Um, because sugarcane is quite a succulent plant. So I'm assuming that it would need a lot of irrigation. Um, I don't know. Anybody from Australia that knows anything about sugarcane farming, please fill me in on some details. I would love to hear some details about that. Right, this one is going... You know, we completely forgot about actually coming back up here. Not that one. Uh, to this one. We've got this field that we just need to finish off. And then there's one more field here of barley that we've got to plant. So those two can carry on with the canola. This... Um, oops, no, keep it lowered down. There we go. This one here can come along the end. With one part of the seed drill out of the field, just sort of on the very edge of the field, it's missing big chunks. You look at this. And I think this is partly to do with the ground response. And I've got a feeling that it's also connected with the Seasons mod. I, got, I, I don't know if it's having any impact at all on the soil or not, but I think it does interact with it a little bit. So it's just sort of making some um, little details happen. Um, I did ask you yesterday, I think, does anybody know why... The, there is an update available, I've been told, for Gorala on Mod Hoster. Um, but does anybody know why it's on Mod Hoster and not been uploaded to Mod Hub? I know Mod Hub has very long testing times, and this is um, starting to frustrate a few people. Um, some modders are now 
uh, posting their mods elsewhere, not on um, Mod Hub, because of the long testing times. And I don't know—is it is just to do with that, or is it—is there another reason that it wasn't posted to Mod Hub? Um, I would really like to know that. And I am going to try. Like I said, I will try to get the updated version, which means that we'll be able to have um, like proper snow layers on here rather than just one layer. Um, in theory we can do this if we've got more if if we got if it's like properly adapted for seasons you don't get snow going in the sheds or on the roads or anything which means that you can have um loads of snow all over the map it's not going to impact it at all whereas if you don't have um it properly adapted for the seasons mod um you you can only have it on a single layer because it puts it everywhere and you end up getting snow in your sheds and stuff and that can have a negative impact on the game so the version we've got at the moment is that one but there is the updated one that is compatible with seasons which means we could have lots of layers of snow we could have tracks going in the snow as well which is a really cool thing it's a really cool idea having tracks in the snow and everything else i think it could be um very awesome playing the game like that so that in the winter we've got to do snow plowing uh we've got a sort of you know it would help if i actually turn this sea drill on wouldn't it um, yeah, so there's, there's all sorts of things that we can do if we can have the ver that updated version. But there's not a lot of details as to why it's been changed over. And I also don't know if I'm going to need a new save game. Because if I need a new save game, that is going to cause some issues. Because uh, I don't really want to do a new save game. It'll mean sort of uh, playing around with the XML files, I would guess, to try and make this one work on... Um, the updated version but I will play around with that later on in the week so that next week I can tell you one way or another what's going to happen with it um, anyway my question for this week is what would you like me to plant in the last few fields we're doing barley here and canola over the other side um, but near the sheep and the single field that we've got towards the south of the map uh, we've still got some space um, and I don't know what you want me to plant. Do you want me to plant soybeans down there? Or do you want me to put um, corn there? Now, corn would be probably in preparation for pigs. Soybeans would be for profit. Uh, one or the other. However, profit... Don't think, don't, don't think that we have to prepare for the pigs just yet. Because we can always plant corn next year for the pigs. And profit is going to help because we could buy pigs. However... If we've got corn, we've got a big supply of food ready for the pigs when they turn up. Um, so yeah, there's pros and cons to both crops. Which one would you like? Is your vote. It's your game. Head into the comments section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right-hand corner. Now then, I'm just going to press H and let the Zeta carry on here. It's very, very bouncy, isn't it? It is very bouncy. I'm glad we only got one of these rather than getting a fleet of the small ones. Um... I think if we'd had an entire fleet, it would have spoiled it a little bit. But I'm going to let that one carry on. He's going to run out fairly soon, but at the moment he's all right. This one is leaving the odd little strip here and there. We can we can always go back and fill that bit in. And the Z... Uh, New Holland, rather. There we go. Has... Actually, it's just about finished. Okay, ideal. If we just tidy this field up, I can get started on that next field over there. Um, what have we got left? Still the plant. We've got... I'm doing the last one there. And that field is grass. And then over here we've got these two done. I've just got three small ones over this side. I've got those two little ones there and another one on the other side of the road. Um, so yeah, we have almost done the planting. I'll probably still do a little bit of the planting tomorrow. However, most of what we do tomorrow is... I'm thinking we'll cut a tree or two down. And possibly that tree right there so that we could join those two fields. Maybe we could take out those two trees. And then next year, we could plough that field. It can all sort of join in together. Um, or we could do one down over there. We, I think that's what we'll do, is we'll take out a tree or two, um, sort of so that we can prepare for the... Um, in next year, we'll be able to um, join a couple fields together. I would like to do that. I would like to it sort of um, not just have loads of really tiny fields. I'd like to build up a couple of slightly bigger fields although i'm aware that in this part of the world this is very this is normal agriculture this is what you would expect to have loads of little tiny fields like this rather than one great big field so um 
we're not going to do it very much. We'll only join a couple of fields together because I would like to keep the flavor of this map very much alive as it is. So let me just get lined up down here so that we can get started. Okay, that should, I'm hoping, have lined up right. I don't think it's quite done it. I may have to just tidy it up at the end, but we'll see. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.